last year Home Assistant brought us changes to how we manage areas, or what it's called now zones. Well, it was a move in the right direction, but I do still feel that this area needs improvement. The cards are too bulky, you cannot influence on what you can see on the cards, at least to some point, and it really needs a serious redesign. Instead of that, today we'll be looking at this HAX front-end component that will allow you to tweak how your rooms look, what entities you see, how it is presented, if it is presented, and a lot more. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let's start, of course, by thanking Marco Craft87 on the GitHub for creating this front-end component. The installation, of course, is very easy, since this is a front-end component. All you have to do is install it through the HACS. In your Home Assistant, go to HACS, Frontend, click on Plus to explore download repositories, type in Room, and install Room Card. Click on Download. At the time of the recording, the latest version is 1.07.25. Click Download and Reload. And that should be it. If, by the way, you have issue with this front-end component or any other front-end component in Home Assistant and when you try to add it to your UI, it doesn't show it, it says that card is missing or something similar, press Ctrl and F5 on the keyboard and this will clear cache and also reload all the components. This will fix 100% of the issues 50% of the time. Ok, before we continue, let's talk a bit about this room card. One thing to note is that, unfortunately, at the time of the recording of this video, there is no UI editor. The author is working and it is on the to-do list, but you will have to do the YAML code, at least for now. Second biggest issue is you will have to do a YAML code. It's not very hard and I will be leaving a link down in the video description to all the cards that I have created. I will post it on my GitHub repository, of course, free of charge as always. You can go take out the components I created, look at the examples here, paste them in your system, just change the entity names and it is a good starting point. And also this is how I started with my UI. But before we jump into the code and what you can do, how to control it, etc., let's look at the wiki, because you will there find a lot of the information that can help you along the way. If you click on wiki, go to configuration, you will see everything that can be configured in this integration or this custom component. The easiest way for me to explain you or show you how things work is to show you the UI and then show you the code. Let's, for example, look at this, let's call it the most complex card here. This is a typical card, it has a header, and these icons or information here is called Info Entities. Whatever you list under Info Entities section will be shown here. The next row is Entities. These are all the entities that you can list, and they can show state, the icon, they can change the color, they can be automatically hidden if the condition is met, or they can show up if the condition is not met. And the third row allows you to also sideload or load additional cards. This is the card section. If we click on three dots and look at the code, it looks like this. We start by definition of the card. It's a custom room card. Then we have a title. Title can be any text, but I do suggest that it be a short text. Then we have an entity. This entity here is actually this one here. The use case for that can be same as here. For example, you have 4, 5, 20 lights in your living room. Then you create either group that contains all the lights or a light group that contains all the lights. By adding it here, you can turn on and off all the lights down there by simply click this icon here, like this. Then we define the action. Top action, for example, is toggle. Top action can be any action that is supported. Turn on, turn off, toggle, etc. Then we define the icon. This icon can be same or alternative for this light or group of lights. And show icon, in this case, must be true because we want to use this icon that we defined here. 
Next row, this row. Here are the entities. Here you can define all the entities that you want to add. For example, I have one, two, three, four lights. These are the lights here. Then I have two media players, LG TV and Google TV for Chromecast. And the last one is climate, living room or smart thermostatic radiator valve. But you don't see it here and it is listed here. Why? We have defined height if condition and that means that the entity will not be visible if the state of the entity equals off. If for example this would be in on state, we can see the radiator present in the UI. You can use this for lights, for motion sensors, you can even tie this to some other entity. For example, show this light only if this entity is on and off. Or for example, you can only turn the light on if there is no motion in the apartment. Or you can show the control for AC only if the windows are closed. So you can play with it and you can customize how this card looks for you. Next we have info entities. Info entities are these entities here. I decided for my setup that I always want to have motion detection on the most left icon and the internal or this room temperature sensor on the far right. And I can add anything in between. We have binary sensor living room motion occupancy. This is this sensor here showing us that currently there is nobody or no motion in the living room. Then we have information about the display me. This is this media player. Next we have information for the Shelly gas sensor that everything is okay, there is currently no gas leak and I hope to never see this item change. And the last one is sensor living room temperature. As you can see this one is showing us just the state. You can of course also customize it. For example if this would be time you can customize it to show, for example, something happened at 7.30 or something happened 5 seconds or 5 minutes ago. And the last addition or a last part of everything, of course, everything here is optional, is card section. Here I have defined one, two, three media players plus, once again, smart thermostatic radiator valve. One, this player is currently visible because it's in the pause state. We are only showing the media players if the state is playing or paused. Since those two are stopped or powered off, you do not see them as a card, which really helps with uncluttering of your UI. The same thing goes for this smart thermostatic radiator valve. Since it's currently summer, I don't need heating. That's why this one is disabled because the value is off. If it would be disabled in value on, we would be able to change the temperature, see the state, current temperature, etc. Hey, by the way, did you like this video so far? If you did, don't forget to click the like button down below. Also check that you are subscribed. If you're not, click on the subscribe button and also bell so you get notified on the future videos. Thank you. Here are all the rooms that I have in my apartment. And by glancing them, I can see the state of everything. For example, all the lights or everything except these matrix lights currently is off. Temperatures in each and every room, except this Bluetooth one which didn't pick up the values. We don't see motion anywhere or any of the sensors. There is a door open, this is a front door. Here I have also images from the cameras. Information about my scooter charger, it is currently on state. And one of the maybe most fun things is of course this section here. Let me open it. This card once again is type custom room card. Title is loft, which is the space here. We have one entity that I want to control from this button. And this is my LED strip on the desk. Then we have other lights. One, two, three, four lights, which are the lights that are in this area here. We have media players or my HomePod, my Echo device and my not connected Google device. We then have once again info entities showing us the illuminance value, this one here, and the temperature value, this one here, because I still haven't hooked up my desk thermometer to show me those values. Instead, I'm pulling values from rooms around this one. Then we have once again cards, one, two, three media players. We have card that is showing me information about the ink in my 
HP DeskJet printer. And we also have this here. This is the card that allows me to control my AC. For example, I can remove this, save it, and now I can see the state and also reduce or increase the AC cooling or heating. Of course, all the entities will change the state as soon it is changed in Home Assistant. For example, if I now push a message to my Display Me, Google Nest device, that is here present in three rooms, which actually is open space, it will automatically show this device here, where it is currently hidden, like this. And as soon as the message stopped playing, the device was hidden, because we are only showing the device or entity if it's in the playing or pause state. There are a lot of other things that I still haven't done with my system, but I may do later on. I really do recommend that you start by reading the documentation and also copy my code or the code from the wiki, but I think that currently I have a little bit more examples than they are in the wiki. And you can go to wiki by following this link here, going to configuration, and then just try and see what fits. For example, one thing that I didn't tackle here is styles or how to format icons to change color depending on the state of the device. For example, if the internal temperature is less than 20 degrees, I want it to be blue. If it's between 20 and 25, I want it to be green. And if it's above 25, I can, for example, change it to orange to represent that that temperature is too high. So there are still a lot of things that you can additionally do with it. And there are examples in documentation, although some things you will have to try on your own. I did mention previously how you can display the same value in different formatting ways. And this is the information on how to tackle the formatting. I did show you how you can use high diff, but you can also play with the state of the value, but not only on of state, the actual numerical or whatever state of the entity itself. Or you can also hide one entity based on the state of the other entity, which I also mentioned. Same goes for the icon conditions. For example, typical case could be if you have a car, the electric vehicle, and you could be charging. Depending on the state of the battery charge, you can either change the color or the icon itself. One thing that I haven't played with or I did try, but I didn't find use case for myself currently is templating, icon templating, templates. While templates are great, for example, I did previously mention that you can change the color or the icon of the temperature sensor or the numbers that represent the value based on the state of the entity. Here you can define templates, set that this is the temperature template, and then in each of the temperature sensors you use template, temperature, template to have the same representation of the values throughout your UI. If you're wondering how long it took me to create this UI. Actually, I don't think that it took me more than two or three hours, maybe maximum four hours, because I was also playing with the icons to match them with the type of devices that are installed. So I can even visually know without reading what actually the device is. For example, this icon here that I'm currently switching is the icon for the WLED matrix. The one icon I couldn't find in any icon repositories was a goose, so the bird will do for that one. Let's talk about bad things with this front-end custom component. And there are always bad things and good things. Nothing, unfortunately, is perfect. Except maybe for me. The problem that a lot of you will have, of course, is that it is not using UI editor. If we check the documentation or GitHub repository, we will see that the editor is one of the things on the to-do list. Second, there are some bugs. I've gone through all of them. Nothing looks serious, but for example, some of the cards have issues displaying as a cards inside this room card. One of them is, I think, picture entity. So same as with any code, there may be bugs in the code, but from what I've tested, I didn't encounter anyone, except one. And let me show you that one. If I edit dashboard, edit here, and for example, type fast, you see that the name changed here, but here it didn't update. It looks like it misses the final update. Deleting or adding a letter here doesn't update it here, but that's not big a deal. If we click on save, you will see it here as it should be. 
And the third, and maybe the biggest issue with this component is lack of time. When you start working on this card, you will actually want to add as many devices, as many entities, both in card section, entity section and info section, as you can. At one point, I simply had too much information and the cars themselves were overwhelming. And yeah, it really takes a little bit of time to plan everything, to think of the overall UI for your home and then just dive in and start working on it. My recommendation is to use hide if, so that for example you do not see entities that are currently in a state you are not interested in. For example, constantly seeing this card that this Sono speaker is in the pose mode is something that I don't want to do. I can for example remove pause state and now this device will be only visible if it starts playing. And the last thing, unfortunately, is more of a wish than something that I expect will happen soon. Zones in Home Assistant work in a such a way that when you add entities or devices inside zone, it will automatically create a list of the devices there and populate it in each of the individual cards. This here is manual work. Unfortunately, while I would love to be able to have everything imported, I also think that that could be potentially a clutter. Actually using the, in the future, UI editor or now YAML editor is maybe a better option than have something pre-filled which actually I don't want to see here. But in any case, I really do hope that you will have fun with this card and I would love to see what you have done with the room card integration. Once again, thanks to Dev for creating such an awesome front-end component and if you create an awesome card, I really would love to see it. So if you create it, Share it either on my Discord server, the link is always in the video description below, or tag me in a Twitter post, and I'll be seeing it there. And before I wrap up this video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed or commented on my videos. Thanks to all of you, I will soon have 25k subscribers. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by either clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, or go to my merchandise store and buy something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.